Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I've got a very special video for you guys because it is going to be a cheapy list, which I already did uh, months and months ago, back when my channel was still earlier in its um, in its uh, setup where I was actually shooting out of a different room in the house before I had this whole setup behind me. Uh, I did a cheapy list and actually someone brought to my attention that I left off one of the best cheapies you could buy and he was right, I did, I left it off. So I said, thank you very much for bringing it to my attention. I can, uh, you know, take responsibility when I, uh, when I make a mistake. And since I've been going back and planning on ranking my old This Is Not A Top 10 videos, I ranked the Ola Banham list. You can go watch that video. I figured we would reshoot the cheapy list and I would be a little bit more thorough and I would also include prices. So this time I have prices off of eBay as of right now with shipping. All of these are under $40. Some of them are under $10. Um, but all of these are under 40 and when I first shot the video, um, I did it under 35, so I've added five bucks for inflation because inflation has been crazy this year. So with shipping, you can get all of these right now under $40, but there is a catch and the catch is some of the formulas that I'm going to show you are going to be the vintage and you're going to receive the modern version if you just buy the cheapest one. So if you really want, I'll talk about versions when we get to the different fragrances, but if you really want to experience the proper vintage, you're going to have to pay up. If the modern version is 35 bucks, you may have to pay 65 or 75 for the vintage or whatever it is. Each fragrance is going to have a different market set. But just understand, if you go for the cheapest fragrance, you know, if you're really on a budget um, and you have to go for the cheapest fragrance, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just understand you're going to get the modern formulation. Vintage is almost always preferred, and there's a reason that there's that markup included in that. Um, so before we get into this, uh, we're going to do Scent of the Day, which is a vintage fragrance in and of itself, but it's not a cheapie anymore. In fact, it can be quite pricey depending on stock. It's a Pierre Cardin fragrance, and it's called Enigma. Not Roja Enigma, which now if you type in Enigma, just Roja pops up because his creation E or Enigma fr fragrance got so famous, and I do love that fragrance. <sighs> this is something completely different, though. This is lavender with this uh, pine note uh, with leather and cedar in the base. There's a beautiful geranium, jasmine, rose, carnation combo in the heart, and there's this cinnamon note. And... Even though this fragrance came out in 1992, which by the way, look at the bottle. Uh, the cap, which I don't have because this is a tester that I bought from uh, Anuj. Um, I don't have a cap, but it looks like it almost creates a circle right here. Like if you made this look like a bomb, okay, falling, that's what the cap looks like. But it's actually not a bomb. It is a fencing mask. So imagine this is the guy's mouth. This is his neck. This is his eyes, and this would be where his head was with the cap. Stunning bottle, stunning presentation, and stunning fragrance. And to make matters worse, I looked today, there are zero reviews on YouTube. Criminal. Absolutely criminal. There's no reviews. I'm going to review this um, very soon. It's absolutely amazing if you like 80s fragrances, okay? If you like fragrances like Wall Street by Victor... Um, you know, if you like, even uh, La Toise Homme by Caron, Third Man, there's a, there's a little bit of Third Man resemblance here because even though it opens with the lavender and tarragon and coriander and there's this beautiful orange note that you get in the opening as well, I detect clove. So even though there's no clove listed, I think clove is the secret weapon and I think that clove note is why it will remind you a little bit of uh, La Toise Homme, I think. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that clove note, but that's my guess. If you blindfolded me and said, does this have clove? I would say yes. But the clove, lavender, it's just absolutely stunning. Uh, a base of sandalwood and a little bit of patchouli and, of course, oak moss, you know. It's a 1992 fragrance, but it's absolutely stunning. No one talks about it. Zero reviews on YouTube. It's my scent of the day. 
I just love stuff like this, but it's not on the cheapy list. Okay, five minutes in, we gotta get going because there's a lot. I was very thorough and I have prices for you. So let's get going. Fragrance number one, and these are in order, by the way, of what I think are the best value cheapies. Uh, so we're gonna start with the with the ones that, these are all great fragrances. I'm not saying one's bad, one's good, but I rank them in order of the ones that I thought had the, um, we're going from the from the lowest to the highest value. So at the end of the list are gonna be the ones that I think are the best buys right now for under $40. So the first one is going to be Coty's Musk. And this came out in 1974. And the reason that this is here, obviously this is a cheapie. Uh, currently you can buy this for 44 ml, which is what my bottle is, strange, ml bottle but that's how it was back in the day 44 ml bottle for um eight dollars and 70 pennies shipping included now uh Coty put this out as a response to jovan musk which jovan really kind of caught some of the drugstore brands off guard and we'll talk about a jovan fragrance later on that's on this list but there was almost like this musk this run on musk. Everyone had to have a musk fragrance in the 70s. It was the, if you were a hippie, you know, in the 1970s, you wore musk. Musk was like the thing to wear. And it was supposedly supposed to be an aphrodisiac and all this stuff. And um, so Coty's musk was issued in response to Jovan musk. And for $8.70, I'll tell you what, I mean, this is a good musk fragrance. Just understand, it's not going to be Musk Coupe Lycan, $300 quality. You know, it's going to be uh, a cheap fragrance, but it doesn't smell cheap. But the ingredients don't smell high quality. They don't smell like the highest quality ingredients. If you're used to sniffing niche and you smell this, you might go, oh, okay, you know, it's not bad. But uh, if you're on a budget and you want a musk fragrance, a proper musk, you can't beat $8.70 for 44 mils of Coty's musk. Okay, we're going to talk about some clone brands, some clones. I usually don't talk clones on my channel, but since this is a cheapy list, I am going to talk about some of these. Um, and I want you to notice something. on the Look at the presentation. This is a clone brand called Latafa. Latafa is made in the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. And this is called Kaed. Kaed. I don't know how to say that. Q-A-A -A apostrophe E-D, Kaed. Uh, but look at the detail on the little leather packaging that it comes in. It looks like a Dunhill Icon bottle, by the way. And Kaed has that Latafa DNA. There's Latafa's symbol. <laughs> Which, by the way, um, I have to say that, you know, these brand, these brands like Latafa and Rasasi, they get a lot of hate. They do. And some of that is deserved. But the other part of it is this fragrance right now for 100 mils. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration. Uh, you can currently get it for $27.85 on eBay. Shipped. Okay? $27.85. This has a similar DNA. If you blindfolded me and you put some of the $400 Spirit of Dubai fragrances in front of me, which if you've been following my channel, you know I've been doing some first impressions on them. Some of those are very nice, but some of them, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference between something like this and I mean, something like, look at the juice color. It's that oriental, spicy, it's got that Middle Eastern oud. It's powerful. There's that Middle Eastern saffron. This came out in 2018. Amber, leather, and vanilla. You know, if you blindfolded someone and said, this is a $400 Spirit of Dubai fragrance, you could, you could trick people, okay? It's possible. Uh, the reason it's here is because it's a clone house, and I usually don't talk about them, so I put some of the clone houses lower, but you will be shocked. There is one that's much higher in my ranking. Actually, a couple of them. So, that is Latafa Kaed, and I think I bought this off of Zhao Lima's recommendation. I saw him do a video on it one day, and I bought it, and he was right. It is, you know, it, sometimes these houses, these Middle Eastern houses, punch way above their weight class, and sometimes they make something that you're just like, oh, Jesus, what is this? 
But before we go any further, I was remiss in mentioning, uh, if you go back to my first video, there were two fragrances that I um, left off of this list because the price exploded higher. Well, not really exploded, but it did end up being much higher. The first one is um, Cheruti 1881 Bella Notte, which is a flanker of Cheruti 1881, which actually is on this list. I don't know if this got discontinued or what, um, but this is now $50 instead of the under $35 it was when I shot the video earlier this year. And the second one is Hanai Mori HM, which kind of came out in the mid-90s. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration. Uh, and the Eau de Parfum, the cheapest I could find a 50 ml bottle like this now, is... Um, $75. So it was under $35 when I shot the video. Now the cheapest is $75. So I had to leave these off of the list. But if you compare to the old list and you're going, where did these go? That's why they're not on the list. So sometimes procrastinating on a fragrance when you see a good deal, um, you know, you'll run into situations like that where the price just shoots up. Okay, next we're going to do another um, Rasasi, or our first Rasasi, I should say, because the previous one was Latafa. I always get the two houses confused. This is Rasasi's Shura. And Shura is this um, insane fragrance, okay? It smells like an 80s fragrance almost. It smells like if a Middle Eastern house tried to make an 80s fragrance. Look at the um, color of the juice. The color of the juice will completely blindside you. This is not a blue aquatic. This is a smoky. There's even a tomato leaf note in here, by the way. You might remember me talking a little bit about What About Adam by the House of Yop and how that has the best tomato leaf note. I said that Trusardi uh, Luomo has a tomato leaf note in here. And I said there's not really any I know that have a tomato leaf note. This one does but it's mixed with freesia, rose, sandalwood, cedarwood, oak moss, oud, and, and leather. And it's a little bit funky. It's kind of a funky floral. It smells like an 80s fragrance, a Middle Eastern 80s fragrance. It's, it's totally weird, but this one's a little bit more expensive. The quality is a little higher quality on the, on the Rasasi, I think, than the Latafa. Uh, you have to pay... $39.89 for 100 mil, 90 mil, sorry, this is a 90 mil bottle. This one just barely broke under that $40 mark. Um, but, you know, you do get a, a lot of juice, 90 mils is a lot of juice, and you get a quality fragrance. I mean, you know, I don't talk about these brands on my on my channel because... You know, they're, they're seen as lesser, they're seen as clone brands, they're looked down upon, but honestly, some of this stuff is is very good. These houses have potential. You know, they're, they're more than just clone houses. To, to, I think they can be more than that, ultimately. Next up on the list is, a, um, is another Latafa fragrance, and this one is actually discontinued. Go figure. So it just came out. It came out, um, I think, two or three years ago. It's already discontinued. It's called Amir Al Oud, Intense Oud. Insane name. But look at the bottle. This is what it looks like. Um, and Amir Al Oud, Intense Oud, smells like the fireplace mixed with... Um, Spice Bomb Extreme, okay? So if you've ever smelled uh, the fireplace, you know it kind of has that warm, um, you know, comforting winter-like scent, chestnuts roasting on an open fire kind of vibe. This has that. It's got nutmeg, saffron, labdanum, oud, vanilla, and leather. The thing about Latafa, though, is, and you and you also get it in this Kaid, ka Kaid fragrance is that they have this um, DNA that runs through the house that you know if you if you're sniffing expensive stuff and you smell this you'll instantly pick up on those woody ambers those cheaper you know woody amber notes that everyone kind of looks down upon 
Um, it's there. There's no doubt about it. It's there. But even with that, I can still say, you know, I did not buy buy the fireplace because I own this. Um, I mean, it's 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 pretty damn good for what it is. Um, so if you like those kind of resinous, warm vanilla, it is a little bit sweet. That's the thing. For someone like me that doesn't necessarily like sweet fragrances, sometimes these can really put me off, but when they're properly bl blended, I can stand it. Okay, next we're going to go to a Michelle. Oh, I don't know if I told you, but the price on Amir Al Oud Intense Oud is 100 ml for $29.87. Okay, next we're going to go to a Michel Almarac creation, master perfumer Michel Almarac. He has more coming up. Um, this is Sculpture Ohm in the sail, in the sailboat bottle. Um, and Sculpture Ohm is a fresh scent with a little bit of sweetness, narrowly orange blossom like vibe when you first spray this very clean white shirt, you know, reminds me of like wearing a white shirt on, by a beach or something. Um, there is a little bit of uh, base. It's it's amber, benzoin, tonka, and cedar, but it's mostly about that clean, fresh orange blossom and a jasmine, lily of the valley, geranium rose. Came out in the mid-90s, 95, so it was on that fresh, sweet, you know, um, unisex feeling, although this was marketed towards men. And uh, you can buy 100 mils of Sculpture Ohm for $14.65 pennies. Right now, shipped. So, Sculpture Ohm. Next, we're going to do a Halloween Man fragrance, which Halloween's a house. I have no bottles but this one. Okay, it's the only bottle I have. And this one's called Halloween Man X. Halloween Man X. And the reason that I ended up buying this, this is the only one I thought was full bottle worthy. Even Halloween Man X is kind of borderline for someone like me, but I bought it because it had this interesting coffee note. And you don't see very many perfumes that have the note of coffee. Um, I've mentioned Trussardi Inside Man by Nathalie Lorson is one of my favorite coffee fragrances of all time. Um, and this has a beautiful coffee note to it. You can buy 120, this is a 120 ml bottle, 125 ml bottle. Uh, for $32.99 right now. Shipped to your door. It's pretty damn good. Um, Halloween Man X is a creation by uh, Nicolas... Uh, oh, God, I'm going to butcher this. Bully, Boliu. Uh, Nicolas Boliu. Cardamom, lavender, lemon, whiskey, roasted coffee, leather, mineral notes, cinnamon, tonka, amber, frankincense. I blind bought this based on the notes. Um, and... You know, I'm glad I have it. I don't reach for it very often, but if you want kind of a, if you're in the mood for like a sweeter coffee, see, I've mentioned many times, I like the uh, Inside Man by Trussardi because it's not sweet. It gives you that coffee, but it's like a unsweetened Italian coffee. If you're ever in the mood for like a gourmand sweet coffee, this is what I would reach for, which I almost never am, but I'm glad to have the fragrance. Okay, next we're going to talk about a English laundry fragrance, only English laundry fragrance in my collection, and it's called Windsor Pour Homme. Now, Windsor Pour Homme uh, smells very similar to a uh, much more expensive Victor and Rolf fragrance called Spice Bomb Extreme. So this, Windsor Pour Homme, and Amir Al Oud Intense Oud are the two that I would recommend if you're a fan of fragrances like Spice Bomb Extreme. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of notes. I don't know who the perfumer is. I don't know when it came out. Um, but it gives you this, you know, it opens up with some aldehydes and apple and citruses with, uh, lavender, cardamom, pepper, clove, cinnamon, lots of cinnamon, uh, saffron, rose, oak moss, oud. There is an oud note in here, which I don't think there's an oud note in, um, Spice Bomb Extreme. But there's leather, there's tobacco, there's tonka. You know, if you like fragrances like Herod or Spice Bomb Extreme, that kind of vibe, um, check this one out. It's it's a cheapie. You can get a um, 
50 ml bottle for $22.35. So I tried to keep the bottle sizes to 50 or 100 ml. Obviously, a lot of these have some smaller sizes too. They have 30 ml, 15 ml, 10 ml. I skipped all those and I went for the 50 and the 100 ml. So $22.35 for 50 ml right now. Okay, the next one is even cheaper. It's a fragrance. It was the very first Alberto Morias fragrance. It's called Homme de Café. Now, a word of caution. This is one of the ones where you want to pay a little bit more and get the vintage version manufactured by COFCI. That's kind of what you want to look for. Also, make sure the Eau de Toilette says right here at the top. The newer ones, I think, don't say that. They don't say manufactured by COFCI. I think someone else owns them now. The reformulation is not that good, honestly. But um, 50 mils of Homme de Café uh, shipped to your door, $14.90 right now. And Homme de Café, like I said, it's Alberto Morias's first creation in 1978, or his first famous one. Um, it is clove leaf, raspberry, cedarwood, bergamot, orange, and musk. And it's pretty wearable. I mean, even in the summer, you know, the clove leaf isn't too clovey. And um, it's, it's an interesting creation. I'm glad to have it. It's not going to blow you away. Like I said, if you've been smelling thousands of fragrances, it's not going to blow you away. But if you like spicy fragrances, you'll like Homme de Café. Okay, back to another uh, Rasasi. Actually, I'm sorry, Armoff. So we've done uh, two Latafas, one Rasasi. Now we're going to do an Armoff. And this uh, fragrance right here is actually the reason why I never purchased... Um, Chanel's Platinum Egoist because this is a clone of Platinum Egoist and it's called Legacy spelled very strange L-E-G-A I'm sorry L-E-G-E-S-I Legacy and this is a Platinum Egoist clone and you know what it's very good this is a good fragrance I usually don't talk about clones because I don't want people to say this that or whatever about me but damn it this is a good fragrance um it's good enough that i i didn't even purchase platinum ego east because this is fine for me um you get that lavender rosemary that herbal rosemary with you know petit gras it gives you this open fields vibe if you will and then you get rose jasmine galbanum and sage and sandalwood, musk, cedar, and oak moss. And damn good fragrance. For what you get, the, the, it's a strange little bottle. It opens up like a Zippo lighter, which I hate. Um, but, you know, our moth, 100 mil. You can see the production code and all that stuff right there. It was produced in 2020. But uh, you can pick up a 100 milliliters of uh, Legacy Armoff for $28.98. Okay, uh, back to the designer game. This is John Varvatos, uh, the original classic or whatever they call it, EDT. John Varvatos, John Varvatos, EDT from uh, 2004. And you can get 125 ml for... Um, $32.97 on eBay right now. That's pretty damn good. And all of these, by the way, the people I chose were like the reputable ones that had lots of stock for sale. I didn't choose one shady guy who had a lower price. These were, you know, six, eight, ten bottles for sale kind of people and um, that have had lots of reviews. So John Varvatos is the um, first Masculine for Men, 2004. It was created by Rodrigo Flores Rue, and it has a note of dates, herbs, tamarind leaf, which is very, if you've ever smelled tamarind, you know, since I'm half Arabic, that date and tamarind smell at the top is very comforting in this fragrance. And then you get coriander seeds, clary sage, but what's interesting is there's oud in this fragrance. This was only two years after M7. So M7 came out with an oud perfume, and then in um, 2004, two years later, John Varvatos came out with a fragrance that had oud in it. It's not as oud heavy as M7, but there's still oud and black leather in the base. The leather will remind you of the leather around the bottle, you know, that black leather vibe. Fantastic designer. 
I mean, you know, if you're on a budget, you can't do much better than this. I mean, I think you can do better because I'm going to show you the ones I think are better, in my opinion. But uh, if you like modern designers, you can't do much better than this. If you don't want to wear some of the vintage fragrances I'm going to show you, this is a winner. Okay, let's go back to the early 90s. This is 1881 Chiruti Pour Homme, okay? Now, 18, Chiruti 1881 uh, Pour Homme is a fresh 90s fragrance, but with a twist, okay? So if you like, you know, it reminds me actually of a very expensive niche fragrance by House of Creed called Royal Water. If you like fresh, clean fragrances like this, lots of juniper, 1881 um, Chiruti for Home will remind you a little bit of that. There's black currant, there's cypress in here, there's juniper, there's oak moss, there's a pine note and sandalwood. Uh, it is very, it's very wearable. And uh, you can actually pick up a 100 ml for $30.99 right now. And by the way, when I say right now, it is July 13th, 2022. So just so you guys know for posterity's sake. Okay, let's go to uh, Yop Om. And this one, there is a big difference between the vintage and the current stuff. I will tell you that. I'm going to quote you the prices on the current stuff, but I am showing you a vintage bottle. I don't think the current stuff is worth it. Personally, I'd say pay up to get the vintage. But, uh, you know, if you're on a budget and you like this style of fragrance, there's nothing wrong with the modern. It's just a little sweeter, less nuanced. The juice color, if you compare the juice color, the new stuff looks like bright pink, like radioactive pink. You know, and you can see the old stuff. Um, it's, it's a little bit more brownish pink if you will yeah i actually really like this fragrance even though it's sweet and i don't like sweet fragrances normally you can get 120 ml of the new stuff for 17 dollars 48 a way to tell the old bottle has this little tree right here the new one is just blank it just says yope across the front and uh, if you flip it over on the bottom what you're looking for is you're looking for distributed by Lancaster. That's how you know it's a vintage. Distributed by Lancaster. Uh, the new one is not Lancaster. So anyways, that is Yop Om. And if you've never smelled Yop Om, it is another uh, Michel Almarac creation. But Pierre Bourdon mentioned he had a hand to play in this too. He also made, or we think he made, original Santal for Creed, which has a similar DNA. Maybe they work together. Who knows? But um, Orange Blossom plays a main role in the opening. Big heliotrope, powdery, chewy, you know, almost Tonka-like heliotrope. And actually, there is Tonka in here, so it probably is the Tonka that gives that feel. Uh, and then patchouli and vanilla and um, cinnamon, big cinnamon. This is very distinct. If you've smelled this, you you know what it smells like. Um, but I actually really like the vintage. I think it's much deeper and much more nuanced. And the ingredients smell so much better than the uh, current stuff. But again, if you're on a budget and you're watching this video for the budget, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the current version. All right, next on the list, we've got Bentley for Men Absolute. Now, this fragrance right here is also a Michel Almarac, and he, he worked with Robert Tett to create this fragrance. <sighs> Woody, smoky, it's supposed to smell like a very expensive, long lost, long sought after discontinued fragrance called Gucci Porom 1. And Gucci Porom 1 came out in 2003. It was also a Michel Almarac creation. It was discontinued, and you can see I have a couple drops left of the original formulation. One day I'll do a comparison video between these two, um, but uh, Gucci Pour Homme 1 is its just an amazing fragrance. I think it smells a little bit better than Bentley for Men Intense, but they're supposedly the exact same formula, but I don't know if that's 100% true or not. Maybe the quality of the ingredients aren't as good. But uh, you'll notice a couple things with Bentley for Men Intense. You'll notice that there are different bottles. Some are all black, like mine. Some are gold, 
around the around the top right here it's just different markets so they put the gold for the middle east or something like that it's the exact same fragrance um ginger pink pepper and frankincense with papyrus there's a major papyrus note here um sandalwood atlas cedar lots of cedar tons of cedar especially in the original and there's oud in this one i don't think there's oud in the original gucci for home one uh amber and oak moss but amazing amazing scent for you know you can get a um you can get a hundred mils for 37 dollars and 89 cents whereas if you got 100 mils of gucci for home one right now if you got it for five hundred dollars, you'd be lucky. You know, I mean, that's that's where that's where Gucci Poor Home One prices are at. Unfortunately, can't wait to wear that again when the weather cools off. I love this fragrance. Okay, uh, I'm gonna reach down because I've got a whole basket of others that I want to talk about, and then we'll go to the other side of the of the um, of the table here. So next up on the list, we are going to go to a Jacques Bogart creation, which by the way, I could have listed probably 20 from this house. You know, everything they do is budget. They're a house that punches way above their weight class as far as value for money goes. But I'm going to highlight this one. This is one I don't talk about too much because it's a little sweeter um, you know, if you like fragrances like Amen by Thierry Mugler, but you don't want to pay the big markup now that that fragrance is discontinued or whatever the heck L'Oreal is doing with the house of Thierry Mugler, I don't know. Um, but this is Bogart Porhomme. And Bogart Porhomme, you can get 100 mils shipped to your door for $18.49. And it does have this tobacco smell um it has this um you know this tobacco like smell even though there's no tobacco listed in the perfume uh there's lavender water lily bergamot floral notes spices patchouli tonka and vanilla um excuse me one second i just have to respond here give me one moment one moment Okay, um, so Bogart uh, Porhomme is the Jacques Bogart that I'm going to highlight right now. And um, even though there's no tobacco listed, it has that sweet Amen-like smell. Um, that Amen Pure Havan-like smell, I should say. And Maurice Roussel was the perfumer. Great cheapy. Okay, next on the list is a vintage, and it is Jeffrey Bean's Grey flannel now i've got multiple bottles of this usually older is better with gray flannel but i will say that um um there there's nothing wrong with the new stuff it's just not as vibrant it's not as you know it's not as uh you know when you when you spray gray flannel the vintage it smells like you know you're in this plush field with green galbanum and all this you know you can just smell the uh, nature around you and you don't get that with the new formulation as much but it's still a fantastic value for money 120 mls of the new gray flannel will run you um 14 dollars and six pennies uh for 120 mils this is only a little baby 30 mil bottle but it's a it's an older formulation but um Wow, I mean, that, that's fantastic value for money as far as just the amount of juice that you get. And, you know, it does have this uh, galbanum, iris, narcissus. There's lots of flowers in here, but it's got a base of almond, tonka, vetiver, oak moss, and cedar. And that almond note in the base is beautiful. It's a fantastic fragrance. When I see people make fun of this, I mean, I just chuckle. It's, it's one of the all-time great masculines. Okay. Now we're going to go to um, Giorgio Beverly Hills, who has another fragrance on this list later. Uh, the first one we're going to show is a discontinued perfume called Red for Men. Now, some people say Red for Men smells like Patu Porhomme. Um, 
The EA version does not. So 99.9% .9 of what you're going to find nowadays is Elizabeth Arden. Um, this, this is the current formula. It does not. I have a mini of the vintage. That's a little closer to Patu Porom. Uh, but this is a spicy, woody scent. Um, it has carnation, artemisia, basil, caraway, rose, thyme, amber, oak moss, leather, and patchouli. Uh, and cedar. Cedar is also a big note here. And um, if you're into the late 80s, early 90s fragrances, give this one a try. You know, it... Uh, so right now you can get, even though it's discontinued, you can still pick up Giorgio... Beverly Hills Red for Men, 100 mils, like my bottle, is $16.50. $16.50 shipped to your door. That's fantastic. Um, and even in the new formula, that's a good deal. You know, obviously the vintage, I'll, I'll do a comparison video one day, but the vintage on this one is far superior. Um, the new stuff has definitely lost a step, but it's still, when you compare the crap the designers are putting out nowadays, this is a great buy for $16 and, um, 50 cents. You know, you can't find this type of perfumery nowadays for men, um, for under $17. They would charge $100 nowadays for this, uh, or they'd call it niche or something. Okay, now we're going to go to, um... We are going to go to a Dana fragrance, and this is an amazing Oriental. It was created in the 1940s. 50 mils right now is um, $13.99 on eBay. So this is a vintage bottle, but uh, the new stuff is $14, basically. You can tell based on the back right here, it says Dana Perfumes Corp. It was then refounded as New Dana you know, it was then refounded as there, it's been dyed and revived multiple times. But um, Dana Taboo, wow. If you like Oriental fragrances, if that's your thing, if you're a lover of Orientals, you have to try Taboo. It is amazing. Uh, it is spices, clove with. Um, Oriental Rose, Ylang Ylang, Narcissus, Jasmine. There is a floral facet, but it's really about the Oriental base. It's about the benzoin, the civet, the ambers in the base. It's absolutely lovely. And again, same thing. You would have to pay tons of money nowadays for a, for a proper Oriental fragrance to smell like this for $14. You know, in, in, in something where... As a man, I feel very comfortable wearing this out and about. It's fantastic. If you like Shalimar, you know, if you like um, Emerald, if you like those kind of uh, oriental fragrances, check out Taboo. That's my recommendation. Okay. Next, we're going to do two vintage masculines from the same house back to back. One came out in 85. And the second one came out in um, uh, 2000 and I think 17. It was recent, you know, 16, 17, 18, something like that. This is Open by Roger and Galay, which is a house that's been around forever. And this is a spicy, woody, fresh tobacco. If you like your tobacco fresh, okay, you don't like the tobacco mixed with syrups like Amen, um, Pure Havan, or you don't like Herod, you know, or that kind of stuff. If you're the kind of person that likes your tobacco more in line with something like Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme from 94, check out Open by Roger and Galay. This is a fresh la uh, tobacco with lavender, sage, and thyme. So it's very aromatic. And um, if you had to wear a, if you had to wear a tobacco fragrance in the heat, this is probably the one I'd recommend you reach for, or, or Dolce and Gabbana Pour Homme from 1994. But you can get a hundred mils of Roger and Galay Open for twenty-five dollars and seventy-four cents right now. For a vintage from, you know, well, these are new. I don't think these are vintage perfumes. I think these are newer 
um, versions, but there's no reason to hunt a vintage down of this, I don't think. Uh, just get the modern. I think it's very, very well kept, in my opinion. Uh, and then, bravely, they put out this flanker, which just, let's say they put it out within the last decade. I don't know exactly when the flanker was released, but it's a modern flanker, and it's called Open Black. And this is actually my favorite of the two, even though it's newer. I really like this one, but they're very similar. Um, open black is, um, you know, it, 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 it still carries that old school vibe. They didn't modernize it at all. Even though it's a modern flanker, it still carries that old school vibe. I think open black is 2013, so it's nine years ago. And um, the tobacco is a little bit heavier, I think, in this one. And I think that's why I like it, but I'm not 100% sure. The notes are very similar. And um, Open Black, you can find 100 mils for $18.61. Even cheaper than the original Open. So if you're into these kind of masculines, I mean, value for money on something like this. And then once you build up a collection, even if you build up a collection of these cheapies, you don't have to worry about, you know, sprays. You want to spray away? Spray away. You know, you want to you want to wear something in the morning, something in the middle of the day, and something at night? Go ahead. You've got the juice to. It's a great way to begin your collection and get your nose on a bunch of stuff. So, another fresh tobacco fragrance is also on this list. This is Versace's The Dreamer. And Versace's The Dreamer is a fresh tobacco you can find 100 mils for $21.82, 2182 And it's not my favorite uh, Versace fragrance, but it has this very interesting tobacco flower. So it's not actually tobacco fragrance, it's tobacco flower. And, but it's, um, it opens up with this green Artemisia juniper, and it opens up with this, almost like this laundry detergent freshness. If you can get past the first 15 minutes, I think you'll like this fragrance. If you give up on it immediately, you might just push it to the side and never try it again. But um, if the first 15 minutes don't bother you, this fragrance is for you. Uh, okay, next we're going to do a fragrance that I think smells the closest to Balenciaga Puro, even though it takes a couple hours to get there. The first hour or two even of this fragrance are different. It's much fresher in the opening. Balenciaga just starts out, boom, in your face, you know, uh, thick, heavy, resinous, the patchouli, all that stuff's there from the get-go. This one kind of meanders its way to you. It goes slow. It takes its time. But by hour three or four, it's about the closest thing you can buy to Balenciaga Porom and not spend the money on Balenciaga Porom, which is a very, very expensive discontinued uh, masculine nowadays. And the fragrance is called Abusin Om. And I talked about this on the first video, so this is not a secret. I've shared this before, but obviously uh, no one cares because prices haven't nudged. Uh, the production on this has been discontinued for a long time. Um, so it's long gone. It came out in 92, two years after Balenciaga Porom. And it shares a lot of notes in common, I think, with Balenciaga Porom. Uh, there's a little bit of other fragrances that you may smell in here, but mostly you're going to get that Balenciaga Porom vibe, I think, uh, with a little bit more greenness. Look at the bottle. You know, you get a little more greenness here than you do in Balenciaga Porom. There's Artemisia, Juniper, Basil, those kind of green notes, if you will. But you can find still, even though it's discontinued, you can find a 50 mil bottle. Okay, so this is a 50 mil for $21.60 right now. Shipped. It's pretty damn good for a, for a discontinued vintage masculine. Um, okay, now we're going to go to a Montana fragrance. And this is called Montana's Graphite. And this was on the first list as well. People have purchased this based on, you know, my recommendation. And, and they've come back and said, I had one guy come back and say, this is amazing. I'm buying three more bottles. Um, this is a Nathalie Lorson creation. And you can find 
a uh, hundred mils of Montana graphite for $35 and 26 cents right now. And Montana graphite is this, um, woody spicy creation with a very interesting twist because in the opening you're hit with this violet leaf note, but don't think Dior or don't think uh, Dior's Fahrenheit. Okay. The violet leaf here is very different because it's mixed with Gayak wood, leathery type notes and um, Natalie Lorson's famous combo of black pepper and frankincense, which she used again in Zadig and Voltaire, This Is Him, okay? So she's done this combo before of peppery, top, you know, incense base bass um, with her patented little benzoin sandalwood thing that she does and guyac wood. But here, there's cedar leaf in the opening, very strange, cedar leaf, but that violet leaf is what really tends to throw people off. And it tends to kind of throw a curveball, but this is a fantastic fragrance. For 35 bucks, I mean, you will not find a better fragrance. It's just you won't, you know, unless someone's going to sell you some of these roses for 35 bucks or some of these amouages for 35 bucks or the, that Balenciaga Pour Homme for 35 bucks, you're not going to get much better than this. I mean, this is fantastic juice, amazing in the winter. Nathalie Lorson is the queen of budget fragrances. I don't know how she does it. Honestly, I have no clue. Um, but she does. So, okay. Next, we're going to do Elizabeth Taylor Passion for Men. And this is a 120 ml bottle. Sorry, this is a vintage 118 ml bottle. The new one is more standardized. 120 ml bottle of Elizabeth Taylor Passion for Men currently $18.19. Now, uh, if you can get a vintage distributed by Parfums International, I would recommend it, but the new stuff is still good, I hear. My God, this is so good. I don't know how you can get this kind of quality fragrance for under $20 nowadays. Um, Elizabeth Taylor's Passion for Men is a stunning scent. And it's so calming, relaxing, that mixture of lavender with nutmeg. I love nutmeg in a fragrance. It just adds this, you know, border, you know, like, like you're drawing within the lines. Everything is kept in its place with, with nutmeg. Um, and then it's all about the base of patchouli and vanilla and vetiver. It's so masculine, so 80s, 89 this came out, and you know, most 80s fragrances nowadays that I know and love are through the roof. Try to find Derby, or Patou Pour Homme, or Bel Ami, or Chanel's Antaeus, or Antaeus Sport, right? Go try to find some of those and not break your wallet. You can get a vintage bottle of Passion, um, even if you wanted to splurge and get the vintage, right? You're not going to spend the kind of money people want for vintage Bellamy or stuff like that. This is a fantastic buy, um, especially if you want to get to know vintage fragrances, but you don't want to break the bank. You're on a budget. Can't do better than 20 bucks for Elizabeth Taylor's passion. Uh, love the bottle too. Like you're at a, like you're at a, you know, um, uh, like you're at an encore or something of a movie. Um, you're at a premiere of a movie showing and the lights are shining up into the sky at night, you know? It gives that very art deco, very, you know, it's it's like it's like it's like a building itself, isn't it? Uh, I love it. Love the bottle. Even the cheap 80s sprayer, I absolutely love it. All right. Finally, we are going to grab two more from this bucket, and then we're going to move to the other side of the table. I told you I was very thorough today. It took me a lot of time to do this. I hope you guys appreciate it. Um, this is also a discontinued fragrance, which is shocking to me, but it is. Uh, this is Mont Blanc's Star Walker. The best Mont Blanc fragrance, hands down. Fresh, woody. Uh, there's a bamboo note in here. This is also Michel Almerac, master perfumer Michel Almerac. And uh, Star Walker is an absolute revelation when you want to relax. These last two, Passion and Star Walker, 
are perfect for lounging around the house. This bamboo note, especially where I'm at in Texas, where it's 100 degrees every day in the summer, it's so um, cooling, relaxing. Um, it just takes the edge off, you know. It's just you smell that bamboo note and everything is okay again, that kind of thing. There's also amber, ginger, nutmeg, nutmeg again, balsam, fir, resin, cedar, sandalwood, and musk. And you do get the cedar, the sandalwood. Uh, it's big on pink pepper too. And I think, even though it's not listed, I think there's a little bit of a star anise note in here. Um, star anise, sandalwood, cedarwood thing going on. And you can get a 75 ml bottle, which I think that's what this is. Yeah, it's a 75 ml. Uh, Inter Parfums is the distributor. And you get uh, 75 ml for $24.95. Fantastic value for money. Especially if you're into the fresher type fragrances, which I usually don't like. I love this one. This is a freshie I love. Mont Blanc, Star Walker. Cannot believe they discontinued it. Cannot. Um, and finally, the highest rated Middle Eastern brand, Cheapy, on the list. This is Armaf Niche Oud. And Niche Oud is a fragrance that is um, suffering from a bad name, okay? Because this is not Niche Oud. Oh, no. This is Niche Amber, is what this is. My God. I, you know, if, um, if you put this under someone's nose, right, and they didn't know what this was, and you told them, this is Serge Luton's uh, Ombre Sultan. That's what you're smelling. You're smelling Ombre Sultan. You could easily trick more than half the people. Maybe more. Maybe you could trick even more. This is so close to Ombre Sultan, which is a very expensive fragrance and one of my favorite ambers of all time. This is so good. I, I honestly have no clue why they named it Niche Oud. I don't even think there's an Oud note in here, to be honest with you. Look at the color of the juice, that ambery, resinous color. That's what you get. This is an amber to me. This is um, vanilla, amber, patchouli, leather, iris, black pepper, cedar, caraway, sage, and some sort of spiciness at the top that will remind you of your grandma's cupboard. That will remind you of ombre sultan spiciness. Um, I just... You know, and this is a 90 ml, okay? Uh, when was my bottle produced? What does it say? 2020. 2020 again. Um, my bottle is 2020. Niche Oud, 90 ml, $35.62, okay? If you don't have Ombre Sultan and you're on a budget and you can't afford to go drop hundreds on a 50 ml of Serge Luton's, Go get 100 ml of Niche Oud. And if you love it, start saving up for Ombre Sultan. But this is, I mean, this is fantastic juice. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I can't believe our moth put this out. And I can't believe no one talks about this. So there you have it. Probably the only time I'll pimp a uh, clone Middle Eastern house is on these cheapy lists. But damn it, that's good. All right. Next, we're going to go to the other side of the table, and we're going to begin with a fragrance called Azaro Visit. Azaro Visit is the reason I don't own Gucci Rush for men. Uh, Azaro Visit is 50 ml for $19.98. By the way, I should also mention that Azaro Visit is now officially discontinued. My bottle is, I don't know who makes it, manufactured for CFG. I don't know. It says it was last marketed by Clarins. I don't know who that is. But uh, cardamom, nutmeg, pink pepper, ambergris, musk, frankincense, and blue Lebanon cedar in the base. 
with Gayak wood and I think sandalwood. I could be wrong, but I think there's a sandalwood note in here. And uh, Anique Minardo made this, the great Anique Minardo. Look at some of the perfumers I'm mentioning. Michelle Almarac, Anique Minardo, um, Nathalie Lorson. We're talking big names here. Alberto Morias. I'm not talking, you know, throwaway perfumers. These are serious noses. Don't get down on a fragrance because it's $19 and change for 50 ml. Just don't. Give, give the fragrance a chance on its own. And if you're a fan of sandalwood or guyac wood, I would highly check out Visit for Men before prices start going higher. Because now that it's discontinued, pretty soon all of that leftover stock is going to run out. And you're going to start seeing it do what Hannah Mori did, which is up, 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 up in price. So, you know, this is a great office scent too. Fantastic for the office. Okay. Um, next, we're going to go to the house of Jovan, which I hinted at earlier. Uh, Jovan Sex Appeal. If you've ever seen, if you've never seen the Sex Appeal box, you need to go Google it and read it. It's one of the best marketing pieces of all time. It starts out with, sex appeal. Now you don't have to be born with it. Um, <laughs> and, and it ends with created for the sole purpose of attracting women. You know, that kind of thing. I love it. I wish they'd put out marketing like that again. Uh, sex appeal to me, if you like fragrances like Givenchy Gentleman, Eau de Toilette from 1974, which I absolutely love. One of my favorite fragrances of all time, made my top 10. This came out two years later, 76, and it's patchouli and spices and sandalwood. It's a very simple composition, but this punch is way above its weight class. Way. I have two bottles of this stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really know how to date these, to be honest with you. I think the current cap is, is silver. So maybe this is like the version before, but I have no clue. I, 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 I don't know. And the new version, Jovan, is like in a square and it's like silver around it. So, I mean, I don't know how to, how to date it. But if you're a fan of fragrances like Givenchy Gentleman, um, check this out. Okay, now, if you are just on a budget and you need to get as much juice as you can... For a small amount of money, I am going to um, point you to this fragrance. And this is actually the bottle. This is a 200 ml bottle, 200 mils, of Calvin Klein CK1 Shock for men. For him. Okay? CK1 Shock. Now, CK1 Shock suffers from a bad name as well. And CK1 Shock suffers for a bad name because it has absolutely nothing to do with CK1. Absolutely nothing. This is created by Lok Dong of IFF. And um, IFF uh, worked with Lok Dong on this fragrance. And he, he um, used lavender, clementine, and cucumber in the opening. But it instantly, almost, I mean, as soon as you spray, that starts to hit into the dry down. And you start to get some of the spices, the pepper, the cardamom. There's a black basil note in here, which is very unique. And then there's um, uh, ambrine, cashmeran, patchouli, but it's all about the tobacco. This is a tobacco scent. Now, it is a little sweet. It's Calvin Klein, modern Calvin Klein. This came out a decade ago, uh, 11 years ago, 2011. Um, but for 200 mils, you can get 200 mils of this for $24.90. That is absolutely stunning value for money. 200 mils. This could be your winter scent. If you're if you're if you're like a student or something and you're on a budget and you just want one cent for the winter and one for the summer, 25 bucks, you're set for 5 years. This is your winter scent, you know. Um Calvin Klein CK1 Shock. Okay, next, we're going to do 
The only one that I got the vintage and the modern pricing on, because it was both right there, um, this is Basile Uomo. And I've talked about this fragrance before. The vintage like mine that is um, distributed by Waruska and Joel and has the short ingredient list or Serpy, whichever you can find. They're both basically the same. As long as you get the short ingredient list, you're fine. Is forty dollars. This is the most expensive fragrance on the block. Forty bucks that I that I included in the cheapy list. You can find the more modern version for thirty five dollars. So if you want to save five bucks, you can. I'd say pay the five bucks and get the vintage. Um, Basile Uomo. And if you've never smelled this, it's basically like a chiffre fragrance that smells like a blend of a chiffre and a fougere. Gives you vibes of that spicy, green, you know, type of fragrance with clove, galbanum, uh, lavender, thyme, nutmeg, jasmine, blackcurrant, cinnamon, rose, oak moss, leather, patchouli, and sandalwood. It will remind you a little bit of Paco Rabanne Pour Homme and a little bit of if you created a fragrance that took Paco Rabanne Pour Homme and turned it into a chiffre. You know, that kind of development. Fantastic fragrance, though. Okay, now we're going to go full-on fougere. And one of the cheapest fragrances on this list, actually one of the cheapest fragrances I've ever seen, uh, it's a fragrance called Lomani Pour Homme. Now, Lomani Pour Homme is a fougere, woody and fresh. And if you like fragrances like, um, if you like fragrances like Guy La Roche Dracar Noir that have that dihydromercenol note or whatever the heck they call it, this is a uh, updated version of that. Dracar Noir came out in the early 80s. This came out in 87. And it's got geranium, rosemary, lavender, camphor, clove, patchouli, kumarin, and oak moss. It's a pure fougere, through and through. Modern 80s fougere, okay? And it is 100 milliliters for $8.24. $8.24. I don't know if you can see that. But it actually says, made in France, it says, um, made in France, natural spray. Uh, look at this little touch. Lamani on the cap. $8.24, and they can put a touch like that on there. But fragrance designers that sell their fragrances for hundreds can't do that. Unbelievable. Okay, next. We're going to go to um, a fragrance that I really struggled with where to put this because this could have been much higher. This could have been number one on my list because I love this fragrance so much. But I tried to be impartial. Um, this is also a fragrance that was discontinued long ago, okay? Uh, and it's called Maxim's Pour Homme. This is a Dominique Ropion creation, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is Ropion. Um, lavender, carnation, amber, jasmine, sandalwood, and cedarwood with oak moss, leather, and musk, and I think castorium. Even though it's not listed, I get a castorium note. If you like fragrances like um, Chanel's Antaeus, if you like castorium, I would highly urge you to check this out. You can get a 50 ml bottle of Maxim's Pour Homme for $34. This has been discontinued for like 25 years. Sorry, 20 years. This has been discontinued for like 20 years. And you can still get a vintage bottle for $34. That is absolutely insane value for money with some of the stuff things are selling for nowadays. I saw an unopened bottle of uh, Gucci Nobile, Nobile. Uh, on eBay for $800. That is insanity. You know, absolute insanity. And when you can still find quality fragrances like Maxim's, or even this next one. This is Bogart's Signature. This is the vintage. 
this is the current. This is what the current stuff looks like that you'll get. But I wanted to show you the vintage just because I had it handy. Um, Bogart's signature came out in the 70s. I did a comparison video between the two. Absolutely stunning juice. Absolutely stunning. Fantastic juice. You can get this 90 ml bottle right here. I told you earlier, Bogart um, has some amazing value for money fragrances. 90 mils, $18.49. And um, green, spicy. If you like fragrances like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, you know, it's that kind of vibe. Um, it is. Uh, Basile, Womo, and Bogart Signature are the two I would recommend to you if you like fragrances like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Um, and Bess and uh, Bogart Signature has nutmeg, Russian leather, lavender. There's a birch note, which I absolutely love. Tree moss, clove, um, geranium, rosemary. The rosemary will remind you of Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. This, this came out one year after. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. So you know it's been influenced by it because Paco Rabanne Pour Homme was a huge hit in 74. Um, okay, now this is the one I left out that one of the commenters was like, how could you leave this out of the list? And I admit my mistake, okay? Uh, this is Bentley for Men Intense. Nathalie Larson, again, nine years ago, she, she put this out. Ugh. If you like liquor fragrance, if you like liqueur fragrances, fragrances that have a note of liquor, uh, this is one of the best cheapies you can buy. Bentley for Men Intense is an absolute gem. It's got geranium, black pepper, frankincense, leather, labdanum, clary sage, cedarwood, patchouli, and uh, sandalwood. And it has this, um, I think it's a rum note. But, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to try and look it up. Hang on. Let me see what the leather note... Or what the... Um, what the um, actual liquor note was in this fragrance. Because I can't remember. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't say on base notes. Let's see if Fragrantica says it. Bentley for Men Intense. Rum. Fragrantica says rum. I believe it. Yeah, it's definitely rum. Um, and you can get a 100 ml bottle of Bentley for Men Intense for $35.99. So the Bentley fragrances are a little pricey. But you get very quality. I mean, Nathalie Lorson and Michelle Almarac were the two perfumers on the Bentley fragrances. Okay, next we're going to do a Boucheron. And you could buy either the EDT or the EDP. I'm showing you the EDT because it was cheaper. This is Jaipur Homme and Eau de Toilette. The new Eau de Toilette's completely clear. And the Eau de Parfum is kind of hazy like it is right here around the outside. But... I did a comparison of these two. This is one of the best cheapies money can buy. We're getting into the big hitters now. The ones I think are big time value for money. And um, you can get 50 ml Boucheron Jaipur Homme EDT for $22.60. Absolutely stunning. We're back to Anique Minardo, by the way. And um, Heliotrope, Lemon, Lime, bergamot, cardamom, amber, jasmine, carnation, nutmeg, rose, vanilla, cinnamon, benzoin, clove, patchouli, tonka, and cedar. Spicy oriental. Fantastic perfume. Absolutely stunning. Cannot believe you can get this kind of perfume still uh, for this kind of money. The heliotrope note in here is stunning as well. If you're a fan of heliotrope, Hard to find good heliotrope fragrances. Check out Jaipur Om. All right, now we're going to do some of my favorite vetiver scents, and we're going to go quick fire. Ancre Noir Sport, uh, which is a flanker to, of course, Ancre Noir, but we're going to start with Sport. 
100 mil, $28.77. They basically took Encre Noir and they added a little bit of aquatic notes. How they made it work, I have no clue, but I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite vetivers to wear in the summer, spring, summer, along with Creed's original vetiver, which is a $500 fragrance, and um, Roja's vetiver, which is a $500 fragrance, and Guerlain's vetiver, which is a $60, $50, $60, $70 dollar fragrance, depending on what you buy, where, and when. Um, but Encre Noir Sport is absolutely amazing. And then, of course, we've got Encre Noir, what the original that started it all, uh, Dark Inky Vetiver by Nathalie Lorson. Um, you know, brooding, dark, smoky vetiver, the kind I absolutely love with her patented cash, cashmeran wood and musk and cypress in that you get a little bit of that pepperiness I mentioned earlier in, in graphite too. I think it's there. That pepperiness that she loves playing on so much is here as well. But you can get 100 ml of Encre Noir for $28.88. Blows some of those other vetivers out of the water. I like wearing this just as much as I like wearing Roja's $500 vetiver, honestly. Seriously. I mean, it's just, it's it's such an amazing fragrance for $28. But the one that I put number one between the three is Encre Noir à l'Extreme. You can see how much I love this fragrance. This is fantastic in the winter. Um, it's a little bit more expensive. 100 mls, $32.42, just smelling it from the atomizer. My God. Um, they added, um, they added this, um, Elemy. So it's, it's lemony, it's incense-y because there's, they added frankincense, iris, benzoin, uh, patchouli and sandalwood and that benzoin makes it like resinous you know it's it's stunning oh I love it it almost has this liqueur like vibe too I like it better than Bentley for men intense actually um, okay and you can get a hundred ml I said for thirty two dollars and forty two cents now Oscar de la Renta pour Louis now this is one of the ones that um, you want to try to find a vintage if you can. I would try to find Parfum Stern, or uh, this one is um, San, San, o Sanofi, Sanofi Beauty. Uh, but even the modern juice is still quite good. Um, but you can get a 90 ml bottle of this. Oh. I absolutely love this fragrance. 1980. There's some freshness, enough that you can wear it in warmer weather, too. Uh, and uh, Oscar De La Renta Pour Louis, 50, 90 mils for $18.75. Anise, aldehydes, caraway, lavender, carnation, patchouli, oak moss, labdanum, leather, sandalwood. It's a pure 80s fragrance. Some people say, oh, it started to shift to fresher stuff. I love Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis. I absolutely adore this perfume. And um, my favorite from the house, bar none. Okay, now we're going to do the final Giorgio Beverly Hills fragrance. And it is Giorgio by Giorgio Beverly Hills. Now, this is a vintage bottle. You won't be able to see that, but... It is older. The new stuff looks yellower juice, you know. A little bit watered down, maybe green looking juice. 1984 this came out. It is officially discontinued. This is aldehydes with orange, pimento, carnation, orris, patchouli, rose, sandalwood, cedar, cinnamon, amber, benzoin, oak moss, honey, musk, tonka, and vanilla. Um absolutely amazing uh this is the honey note in here with the patchouli it just works wonders you know if you like fragrances like Givenchy gentlemen like i said earlier if you like that patchouli honey uh check this one out this is so good and you can currently buy the modern stuff um it is um 
Giorgio Porom, 120 mils of Giorgio Porom, you can buy for $18.20. That is absolute insanity. $18.20. Um, unbelievable value for money. Now, the vintage will cost you a little bit more. Uh, I paid way over that for 50 mils, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I have it. Um, okay, now we're going to go to Aramis. And Aramis Aramis has a 50 ml bottle. Now, one thing I will say, if you can find the one that says Cologne before they started branding it Eau de Toilette, you're going to get an older version. So if you can find one that says Cologne, do it. Pay a little bit more, pay 30, 40 bucks, get the Cologne one. Uh, but if you can't, just get the Eau de Toilette. It's still good. 50 ml, $19.98. Aramis is one of the greatest masculines ever created. Uh, it is Bernard Chant. It is Aldehydes, Artemisia. Ugh. That green myrtle note with tree moss, castorium, leather. It's just amazing. It makes my mouth water. I mean, seriously. I absolutely love it. Okay, next we're going to do the final Michel Almarac, I believe. Uh, and this is Zeno by Davidoff. His name's rubbed off a little bit, but I promise you it's Zeno. And it is Parfums Davidoff. Oh, actually, it's Lancaster. Sorry. Parfums Davidoff. Lancaster is the vintage distributor. The modern stuff is still good from what I hear, but it doesn't have the oak moss that the vintage stuff has. And if you can get a Lancaster bottle, do it. That's my recommendation. Do it. Pay a little bit more. If you're on a budget, um, the, the current formula is going for... Um, Davidoff Zeno, 120 mils, which this is only a 75 ml, but they've got 120 mils online right now for $20.14. That's absolutely insane value for money. For And it's discontinued now, by the way. Um, which, oh God, I love this fragrance so much. This, Guerlain's Heritage, YSL Jazz, Escada Porom, they're all in the same little ballpark for me, and I absolutely love them all. Uh, okay, next, we're going to pull out almost number one. There's still three more to go after this, but this almost made number one. I kind of rejiggered some things. Um, I moved some things around. I reshuffled some things, but this was number one at, at one point. Lagerfeld Classic. Now, you've heard me say this on my channel many a times. If you can get the one that says Lagerfeld Cologne, do it. That's the better version of this. Forget who makes it. If it's Bethco, Parfums International, Parfums Lagerfeld, who cares? If it says Lagerfeld Cologne, you're good. Um, but this is still pretty damn good. Um, you know, this is made by Inter Parfums. Uh, if you can get the Inter Parfums version, do it. Get it over the Coty one. The Coty one smells a little bit weird. Uh, but Lagerfeld Classic, 100 mils, $17.99. Absolutely stunning. Um, $17.99. Unbelievable value for money. If you've never smelled Lagerfeld, by the way, um, Ron Winograd made that. It is the most beautiful orange, orris, tobacco, oak moss fragrance you'll ever smell. It's perfect in the winter. Absolutely perfect. Um, okay, top three. And this was also number one. I struggled on these last four, by the way. They're all, all of, actually these last six or seven are just all interchangeable. Ancre Noir could be number one. I mean, it's one of the best vetivers ever created. But for me, it's Lapidus Porom. Uh, third place, Lapidus Porom. Uh, you can get a modern bottle of Lapidus Porom for $17 and four pennies for 100 mil. That is unbelievable. Oh, God. Now, this is a vintage splash. 
They don't make splashes anymore. All of theirs are sprays, which by the way, um, do I have it here? Oh, I thought I had the current stuff to show you the spray. I don't. Oh well. It's under lock and key. But I did a comparison video. If you look it up on my channel, go to go look up um, Lapidus Porome. You'll see the comparison I did between the vintage and the modern. And I said the modern was damn good still. Uh, they, I don't know how logger, I don't know how um, Bogart slash Lapidus. It's the same house now, but I don't know how they do it. I have no clue how they sell their fragrances. Hundred mil, seventeen dollars and four cents, and keep it in that condition. It's unbelievable. Uh, the vintage is something special, but you know, even the new stuff is quite good. Oh, if you like animalic 80s fragrances with honey and animalic notes, if you like Koros, Antaeus, Bellamy, you have to have this in your collection. And the value for money is through the roof. Uh, Lapidus Porome is... It's it it's a it's a revelation. Martin Gras created this fragrance. Oh, the honey, the florals, the it's everything. It's everything. Florals, honey, orris, rosewood, oak moss, tobacco, tonka, sandalwood, patchouli, lavender, juniper. There's even a pineapple note in the beginning. And no, this is not a ventus. You know, this wipes the floor with the ventus. Okay. Last two. This was almost number one, again. Um, all of these were almost number one. I didn't know where to put these last ones, but this is Salvador Dali Porom. Um, Thierry Vasa's best work. 87, animalic spicy fragrance. Um, and the vintage has like a gold, a gold um, uh, border around the painting on the front of the box okay it's one of the only ways to tell it apart outside of flipping it over and looking at the bottom of the bottle but if you can see the one if you can get the one with the gold border around the box that's the one that you want this is anise basil lavender heliotrope oak moss lily of the valley amber musk patchouli vanilla and vetiver <sighs> this fragrance my god I could just live wearing this fragrance. I mean, I love it that much. Um, you can get 100 mils for $27.95 right now. But I saw a vintage bottle with the border for like 40 bucks, 100 mils. That is a steal, absolute steal. Okay, the final one, my personal favorite value for money fragrance, Hugo Boss number one. That's it. This is it for me. Hugo Boss number one. 100 mils, $27.80. This has that animalic honey that you know I love. Um, it has that tobacco. It has that feeling of, you know, it has that boardroom feeling, that feeling of success, that high achiever fragrance. You know, that's what this is for me. This is someone who... Um, this is someone who strives to be the best and works hard at it, that kind of thing. Honey, tobacco, oak moss. Um, there's even a green apple note in the beginning, which kind of does make you wonder, is this where they got the idea for Boss Bottled? Green apple, juniper, geranium, lavender, rose, sage, orris, jasmine, patchouli, cinnamon. I mean, it, it's... Ugh... 1985, baby. What a year. Boss number one. And anytime you have a bottle where they have to write the price tag on in pen, you know you got a good one. So anyways, this video went way long. I took a lot of time getting the prices, setting this all up. I hope you guys appreciate the effort. Um, let me know your thoughts on some of the cheapies. I hope this helps some of you, by the way, get a good collection going. Uh, likes, subscriptions, always help the channel. Feedback in the comments, I love hearing. And, um, you know, we'll just keep on keeping on. So I hope you guys appreciate this ranked cheapy list, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.